Well, Dell's just sent me a third monitor, number one, number two, number three. But more on that story later. Let's do an unboxing of the Dell UltraSharp 3216Q. Alright, so it's all packaged in cardboard. We've got uh, drivers and documentation disc and some other documentation there. Here's the Premier Colour UP3216Q Colour Calibration Factory Report. Average Delta E less than 2. Quick start guide. And we've got uh, HDMI, mini display port to display port, power lead. A uh, back plate for the monitor connection area. <clears throat> Screen slots into there. cable, the USB 3 upstream cable. Stand. That little tag there was stopping it from coming out. Okay. screen Stand. And there we 
have it the Dell Ultra Sharp 3216Q, UP 3216Q, So there's screen number three. Um, the first part of the video will be concerning these two screens. And uh, after I test those, I'll then make a second part where I test this one. I'll be testing the Dell UltraSharp UP3216Q. It's a 31 and a half inch screen. It's got Quad HD resolution. That's the main draw card. Lots of pixels and lots of real estate. Additionally, it's a 10-bit IPS panel with 99.5% of the Adobe RGB color space. It's also got an internal hardware lookup table, which the Dell software writes to. It's targeted at graphics professionals, so let's give it a test and see what it's like. Here I've got two monitors running in extended mode in Windows 10 with the 1511 update. I'm using an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 960 graphics card and both monitors are displaying 3840 by 2160 pixels. First I'll demonstrate the Dell Display Manager software. It allows switching of control between monitors 1 and 2. So I'll demonstrate the scene modes on the right hand monitor. Standard mode Multimedia, Movie, Games, Adobe RGB, Cal 1, notice the delay, sRGB, I'll skip the color temperature modes. Paper. Rec 709. DCI P3. The next tab relates to the auto mode. Each application can be set to trigger a screen mode change. For example, you can have some apps to run in sRGB, in sRGB mode and Photoshop and Firefox, for example, running in Adobe RGB or in Cal 1 mode. The next tab lets you set up a custom window layout for the monitor and run different apps in different screen windows, not OS windows. I'll demonstrate with a couple of apps. Now when you switch between screen windows, different modes will activate as long as you've set it in auto. Here I've got Photoshop on the right pane and Lightroom on the left pane both in Adobe RGB mode and I've still got screen I've still got the screen mode in manual I'll open Premiere Pro which I've selected to run in in sRGB mode switch to auto and then toggle between the two panes So all that works well and is very useful, useful because you don't want to edit video in Adobe RGB mode.
Now let's look at screen uniformity with a 50% grey image in Photoshop on the left and in Bridge on the right. Both screens are in factory Adobe RGB mode. There's quite a few problems with each monitor. On the left monitor we've got a hue shift towards red on the right and dark band, dark vertical banding along the bottom and on the right monitor we've got dark banding on the bottom and some blue shift towards the bottom as well. These are some shots straight out of an Olympus DSLR which show this problem even more. The top monitor is the one you've seen on the right and the bottom monitor in this image is the one you've seen on the left on the desk. To be fair they don't look quite this bad to the naked eye but this is what the camera sees and it's a fair approximation. What I'll do now is do a uniformity check with the Dell UltraSharp Calibration Solutions software in conjunction with an x i i1 Display Co Pro colorimeter. I'll speed this up a bit. And here are the results. Here's the right hand monitor. Note the blue colour temperature shift towards the bottom. The luminance is not bad, but this test doesn't show up all that banding near the bottom of the screen. This is the left hand monitor. The centre is at 125 candelas per metre squared and the top, le top left is at 110 candelas per metre squared. The colour temperature is all over the place. Neither of these monitors passes the Pro Graphics benchmark for uniformity to my way of thinking. So what good would a Pro monitor be without a good calibration and profiling solution? Well Dell provides the software and it writes to an internal hardware LUT in the monitor. Let's test it out. I'll target the Adobe RGB color space using the software defaults. At this point I'll speed up this video quite a bit. First it calibrates the monitor and loads input data tables and output data tables. It then profiles the monitor and you save the profile to Windows. This takes a ponderous 30 minutes, why I don't know. What about the results? Well, the calibration gave a color temperature of 6434 Kelvin, 121 candelas per meter squared, and a contrast ratio of 890 to 1, which is quite good. What does the resultant calibration look like in Photoshop? First, let's look at the grayscale ramp with the factory Adobe RGB screen mode. It looks quite smooth. Now for the Cal 1 mode. Whoops, lots of banding there, particularly in the dark areas. That's a bit of a letdown. I would have thought that an internal LUT would have made for a much better result. The gamut view in Color Think shows that the Adobe RGB targeted profile is almost an exact match to standard Adobe RGB. In this plot there are two triangles sitting almost on top of each other. Here's the screen sRGB gamut plotted against standard RGB, sRGB, the screen has slightly less red extension. And finally, the native gamut, 
plotted here shows a bit further extension into the violet compared to Adobe RGB. In summary then, this is potentially a beautiful monitor. It's got a 4K display and lovely colour. It's got all the right specifications for photo editing and for graphics use. Unfortunately, it's let down by poor brightness uniformity and poor colour uniformity across the screen. And a seemingly poor lookup table implementation which reduces banding. So now I've got monitor 3 on the left and the original monitor, number 1, on the right. I think I'm making progress. Number 3 monitor looks a bit warmer and a bit more consistent and has less of that banding at the bottom. Now I've got a bit more creative with the Dell X-Rite calibration software. I measured a 5x5 grid on the three screens and jazzed up the charts using the luminance and white point tolerance levels to show the pretty colours. Monitor 3 on the factory Adobe RGB mode has a colour temperature much closer to 6500K. It has a reddish shift just in the lower right corner but I can tolerate that. You can't independently change the colour temperature when you've selected the colour space preset. So once you choose factory Adobe RGB mode, you've got no independent control of the colour temperature. The only solution to that is to calibrate and use the Cal1 mode. I'll try and summarise this as best as I can. First I must say that the Dell support staff were very helpful at all times. There seems to be some variability in the quality of these panels out of the factory or is it just what they call within spec? I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm being too harsh on this monitor. I haven't tested it against similar monitors from other brands like Samsung or Asus. I'll be keeping this third monitor, sending these two back if they want to come and get them. The third monitor that they sent has got a better uniformity in colour temperature across the screen in the important areas and it's closer to 6500K than these other two. So in summary, I think it's a great monitor to use. It's good colour and uh, I like it a lot, except for <laughs> some of those quality control issues. So thanks very much for watching.